Hello and welcome to the Mercury Vapor Glow channel. Today I'd like to present to you this little gorgeous streetlight fixture that is made by Siemens, has the model number 5LA585 as you can see on the sticker. And this is a very interesting special version of this fixture that uh, as you can see uses uh, two uh, 11 watt PLS bulbs and uh, usually you will find these fixtures with mercury vapor bulbs uh, 50, 80, 125 watt maximum or you would find these fixtures with uh, high pressure sodium elliptic uh, 50 or 70 watt bulbs and uh, here this is kind of a special special version of this fixture Additionally, it is in really good shape, although it, it has been used on the street and it has some little corrosion spots on it. But let's maybe start with the canopy of this fixture. This fixture is all aluminum. It's all around. So there is no place for any kind of plastic with sticking out... Uh, fibers or something like that it's very very high quality and lasts basically forever it still says Siemens here on the back because later they started to call it Citeco but this is from the beginning of the 90s here and uh, from 93 or something like that I believe so there is um, it is still called Siemens and uh, what else uh, can we tell about this fixture? This uh, version here has some holes where water could escape the fixture. The earlier ones did not have that. And this is also a fixture that you can convert from a mast arm mounting via here. And then there is this, this plastic cap that you can take out. It just pops out, kind of. And it's not that easy to do with one hand, but... Maybe I manage, okay, like that. And here there is the possibility of mounting the fixture on a post top also. And don't lose that because you can still put it in here when you mount it on the post top. So it's universal uh, cap, right? Let's put this to the side and I'll take apart the fixture and show you the inside. So I have already partially disassembled the fixture and just by undoing these two clips here, you can take off, and this is a pretty unique feature of this fixture, you take off the bowl with the whole uh, lamp chamber basically. And then there you can see it has a special uh, reflectors, like stepped reflectors for the PLS bulbs and uh, a special bulb holder here on the inside like right there that holds the two pls bulbs because right now you can see they are really really sticking out so they they may even fall out or something like that if you if you are not like if it vibrates on the mast or something and here is the usual uh, thing this here has to be pull, pulled out so you undo this pin here and then you can just like that, you can pull out the insides of this fixture and uh, I'll shortly do that and I'll show you the insides. So we have disassembled the fixture completely right now. Here on the inside you can see it's just a contact block that would automatically hear this thing that I'm pointing with my thumb at. It would automatically uh, engage with this if you push it in so you don't have to undo anything and then there is this uh, kind of plastic bowl inside that uh, makes this fixture a uh, class 2 fixture so that you don't have to ground it because it's the electrical components are enclosed in this plastic and of course this is uh, made from plastic too it's on the earlier models it was uh, made from 
uh, the Bakelite plastic in here. It's just, it's the newer version. It's just EBS or something like that. And then here you can see this tiny uh, and uh, gorgeous and sweet little, little um, ballasts. And th these are two ballasts that are completely um, so each each bulb has an own ballast. They are not connected or something, but still you cannot use this fixture with like part time nightly switching off one bulb because you only have like two contacts here. So it was never thought that you would could switch one bulb off or something. And also the condenser, so it indeed has a power factor correction here, and uh, this capacitor is common for both bulbs. So. It only works optimally when you have uh, both bulbs running, of course. And uh, you don't see any starters, right? And uh, these fluorescent lamps, they have a starter built into their sockets here. So this is why you don't need starters for them. So there is no starter holder or no starter or something like that. You change the starter with the bulb automatically. And this, this are not... Uh, fluorescent bulbs that you would often see in streetlights because together they give all of about 1800 lumens that is equivalent to uh, like 150 watt uh, incandescent bulb or 50 watt mercury vapor bulb or 35 watt uh, high pressure sodium bulb so this is really not a street light for a huge street or something like that. I mean, it will light small paths or uh, it will li light a little bit uh, before, like in front of your home or something like that. Uh, but this is not for bigger streets, obviously. Well, let's put the fixture back together. And I start it up and see how it works. Alrighty. We have put the fixture back together and let's see the happy blinking of this preheat fluorescence. So this nice sound of the built-in starters. Let's do that again. And now the tubes start faster because they the ends are preheated already. Let's still do it one more time. So this uh, fixture obviously isn't the brightest on the planet, right? It's built like most of the other fixtures that you can see the bulbs. They are parallel to each other. And uh, the brighter side of the bulb is always the side of the bulb where there are both tubes visible. And when you see from the lower side here, like from directly under the fixture, you can see the bulbs are arranged so that it's their less uh, lumen output side down. But uh, when we go to the side like that, this uh, directional lantern has its main beam like in this position here so you see both sides of the bulbs and additionally the um, reflector starts uh, it becomes active and uh, guides the light to the side and the more you go to the side the beam is like still active and it ends kind of like just here so it's a typical uh, street light with the uh, like a symmetrical light distribution in two ways or in two beams on the street side and a lot some some less light on the direct directly under the light and a lot less like on the street side or house side right so the optics are pretty well thought through in this fixture and work extremely well and are very efficient so this, these fixtures were made for a really, really long time and uh, it just shows how they were really popular and well, thro well thought through designs, really.
and because of that they had a very long production. There was an older model of these fixtures that was kind of 50s, 60s style and so the, uh, it was just rounder than this one, but the concept was already the same. So uh, it was very revolutionary. It was that revolutionary at its time when it first came out that the secret services of uh, because it's a West German fixture, the secret services of the um, East German communist uh, part of Germany or Soviet occupation zone became interested in this fixture and they wanted to, uh, so they started a campaign to obtain some of these fixtures to take them apart and do kind of industrial espionage because it was so good. So and it's pretty uh, amazing. There are some documents that can be found online to prove this. So it's it's really funny, really, I think. But uh, yeah, it, yes, it's a quirky little fixture. Uh, I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.